Hi guys, I'm Chris Barnett, and you're listening to a coming of age movie. What's up everyone? I'm Julia. And I'm Kira. Welcome or welcome back to a coming of age movie. This week, we are super excited to be joined by Chris Barnett. You may know him from his TikTok account that has over 4 million followers. Chris, thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday. Yeah, Happy yeah. Friday. How was your week? Oh man, time, it's a blur. Time is a blur. I feel like I don't know what day it is half the time, but it's a blessing, honestly. Oh yeah, me too. Not have to worry about that. Especially when like, I only work some weeks, so when I'm not working, I have no idea what day it is or like what time it is ever. Exactly. Ignorance is bliss, they say. Something yeah. Like yeah, that's true. So jumping right into the questions, the most basic one, I think. When and why did you start your TikTok account? Oh, man, it's a little less harder than most people's answers. Less lighthearted, rather. Um, so uh, I'm an actor, and I was uh, on my grind in New York City up until two years ago. I got injured in a car accident um, pretty bad. I got rear-ended at a red light uh, from an SUV going like 55 by an unlicensed driver in a hit and run. And um, my spine did not like that very much. So the following year was um, pretty the worst of my life. Uh, my manager and agent dropped me. And uh, I was basically trying to chase down medical care, figure out what the hell was wrong with me. And um, I ended up back in Connecticut, which is where I grew up. So I could consolidate medical care and kind of figure this all out and like get my life back together. And uh, I was in a really dark spot, honestly. And I needed a creative outlet. Enter TikTok, I see it. And I'm like, what is this nonsense? What is this craziness? Um, I'm infatuated by chaos. Um, I'm quite chaotic <laughs> my, myself. Um, but when I saw it, I instantly had flashbacks to Vine. And I was, I remember vividly seeing Vine and being like, wow, that's stupid. Who wants to make a six second video or whatever it was. And then flash forward to me coming back from all of my various expensive acting classes. I'll come home and I'll put on Netflix and I would see these Vine stars like starring in movies. And I was absolutely bitter. I was like the most bitter human being ever. I'm like, they're not even actors. Like they're not training, blah, 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 blah. And uh, when I saw this, I instantly had that um, thought. I can't let another opportunity pass me by. And much more than that, I just needed a creative outlet for myself. So in the absence of, you know, traditional acting as, as it were, being stuck in my little medical depression cocoon in Connecticut, trying to rebuild my life. I was like, you know what? I'll make a video every day. I'll, I'll make one of these stupid little videos every day. Uh, that's, I think, my exact words at the time. And fortunately, it's evolved into this platform that now has so much potential and, and so much content. The diversity of, of creators is phenomenal. You can see everything, every form of art, including acting. Place to be. So that's my little story. Sorry, it's not as upbeat. <laughs> as some may have predicted but that's how I got started I mean it's great because I feel like everyone has the same story like oh all my friends had TikTok and I was like oh it's stupid but then I mean for you it was like really there for you when you needed it so that's really awesome yeah losing my airpod um I'm very grateful for stumbling upon this crazy little app um and it's definitely changed my life uh, my supporters the app I'm eternally grateful so how does your content that you've made now compared to the content you made when you first started posting on TikTok? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> so when I first started posting, I had no idea what TikTok was, nor why there was no real acting on it yet. And I stumbled into this POV community, um, which at the time, especially, was this weird mixture between silent films, music videos, and thirst traps, and, <laughs> and, and sometimes just like lip syncs. And you know, trying to apply my acting training to another actor's voice and cadence and, and make unique decisions and actually act was really difficult. I hate lip syncs. I truly do. I'm sure there's so many outtakes of me just swearing up and down the wall because like I missed one little thing and it ruined the whole performance. But my original content was uh, obviously lower quality. I used a front facing phone camera. Um, and a lot of lip syncs, uh, thirst traps, and like the silent POVs um, compared to now where I, I've upgraded 
and I'm grateful for that. Uh, I now, you know, shoot, I have many productions. I've got, you know, the lights, the camera, et cetera, ad nauseum. I've learned to edit on uh, Premiere Pro, especially. That's like my bread and butter right now. And I, I'm slowly teaching myself like the more intricate stuff, like visual effects and all that and green screening. So more to come. So, I mean, you kind of just covered this, but a little bit like when you're making a video, what kind of things do you keep in mind? Like, do you really think about the lighting or like the audios or what you're wearing when you make a video? Um, I'm far less, unless it's like a period thing or I need, I need um, to differentiate characters in some way. Ooh, my head cooperate. Um, unless I need to differentiate the characters in some way. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with my color series but I essentially played a different character based on the color of my shirt. Um, it, and that's kind of the beauty of TikTok. I feel like you can change something so minimal and, and get the point across to the audience or help them understand. So unless it's that, wardrobe is not the biggest concern to me. Um, lighting, I'm still learning. I'm still experimenting I, as I'm an actor. So I've never had to worry about lighting, or filming or editing or, necessarily even writing or directing or creating like a shot list or, or any of this um but it is creatively fulfilling so now I do worry about all these things not necessarily worry but think about um my biggest goal with with learning to edit and investing in a camera that shoots 4k uh and, and all that stuff is to kind of resolve my biggest frustration with myself and TikTok it's always been, I have these really cool visions in my head. And then when I would get it, you know, when it's all done, when I would get it on paper, so to speak, it would not match up. <laughs> so I'm trying to get the vision and the reality to be as close as possible. And like you were saying, you kind of have to take on all these different roles right now. Like you are producing it and writing it and all that <laughs> stuff. And the sad part is TikTok algorithm is kind of broken. So you could do all of that perfectly and still get, I see your, if, if you're listening to this on Spotify, you, he, you can't see that he is clearly annoyed right now because TikTok doesn't care about talent or good videos. It's a lot of randomness, but have you picked up on any patterns or do you have any tricks that you use to kind of help a video do well? So completely honestly, um, my content on TikTok, the vast majority of it, is not what I would want to do um, completely. So my journey has been about finding a balance between the stuff I want to create, stuff I don't you know, hate creating, what the TikTok algorithm wants, and what my supporters want. Um, a lot of what people seem to like and what the algorithm likes are these you know fast paced minimal movement um kind of the same shot over and over again with intercuts uh and it doesn't leave much space for you know acting moments like i don't get to showcase my, my skill very much um in a lot of these which is unfortunate but the algorithm doesn't care about that or effort or skill i vividly remember when i did that color series that i mentioned earlier i played i think a total of nine characters in that series different accents different costumes different you know shots different lighting setups and i edited it all together i even you know experimented with keying in myself into a mirror um which took so much time but <laughs> but it was doing okay not like the greatest and then after i posted the finale and i was really proud of it I remember scrolling like one video out, you know, when you post your video pops up on your for you page. Mm -hmm. I remember scrolling right after I posted the finale and I see a video of, of a girl eating a piece of watermelon. And it had more views. One, it had more likes than I think my entire series had views. And two, it had more views. It, it was just, it was preposterous. And I was like, that was, I actually took a break. I, I never take a break from TikTok usually. I took a break because I was like, you know what? I just want to burn it down. I want to burn it all down. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just, I mean, it, it's a big lesson and you can't compare yourself to others um, on any of these platforms or in anything really. But that being said, it's hard not to when you, <laughs> you know, put a lot of effort into something and someone eats a piece of watermelon and it kind of blows all of your effort out of the water. It's unfortunate. And I wish the algorithm would change, but 
It doesn't. So you try to use audios that are working and you try to keep people's attention. And those are my tips. I mean, TikTok's a very unpredictable beast in that it constantly changes what it's looking for. And everyone has a different set of rules. So like I myself try to post at least once per day. I know people who take three days in between posting and they never get any kind of penalty for it. It's just a weird, the algorithm is different for everyone. I don't get it. No one gets it. Did I answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's really no answer to how to beat the TikTok algorithm because, you know, watermelons. Yeah. Period. (laughs) That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it changes daily, just like every single like TikTok trend that I see. Like there's like, the amount of trends I see in like a day is like so many, like every single one is different from what I see on the, ne- the next day. It's like by like the time you, by the time you realize it's a trend, you can't make the video because it's already going to be gone. So the amount of saved audios I have that I just never touch is insane. It's baffling, but, right? I'll never forget um, Eliana again. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with her. Um, yeah. She's a good, she's a good friend of mine and we always text, you know, and she found, you know, the I'm not a baker audio, which like is probably her most viewed video. And I remember I just posted one. She texted me. She's like, you got to do this. Mine's blowing up. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll hop on the trend. And, and the difference between in 24 hours was hers getting like 40 million views and mine getting like one. And I was like, oh, okay. So I missed the trend. It's, it's, it really is dependent on trends. So one thing you can do, and I recommend for all creators is take this actor mentality and that, you know, it's, it's one for you, one for them. Um, you know, you obviously you spend all of this money on training and then you get your first role and it's hot bartender and you're like this is exactly what I've trained for I get to show off my acting chops this is amazing and all I do is take my shirt off and wink right and it's like I don't want to say yes to it but I have to to pay rent so one for them and then maybe you can do a role that you want to do so that's the kind of mindset I take it and then when you do see a trend run it through your own personal brand filter for me, I, I'm kind of widely known as the guy who ruins trends because I usually make them really, really dark. And um, everyone's like, why do you have to murder people all the time? I'm like, because it's fun. It makes it um, interesting. <laughs> makes, it, makes it more fun. Add a little, add a little bit of salt to Get it. some spice. Yeah. Well, everyone else is doing the same thing. And I'm like, you know what would be cool? <laughs> if like, you what just if... made it way darker. Yeah. <laughs> so do trends like typically affect the kind of content you make? Like, do you really take into part like what's going on right now or what's popular well everyone's for you page is different so I feel like I don't even I I don't even scroll that much anymore honestly I I barely use the app nowadays except to create because it's just too much when you get to a certain point it's it's just way too much like the notifications are always maxed out you can't really do it's just it's a lot so I just create And then I post it. I try my best to engage with my early gang for like the first like 10 minutes after I post the video and then I'm out of there. That's it. Wish I had the power to do that. (laughs) Dude, it's bad. And then the trends, I mean, I don't know what's popular, but if I see something that's working well for someone else um, who maybe creates similar content, I might try to do my own version of that or I'll take the audio from behind it and make, you know, like a new concept. Um, those are things that I try, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Yeah, and you were saying that you know it's good to get a mix of what you want and what your your viewers want and all that. But if you could like choose, what were what are your favorite types of videos and favorite kind of genre of point of views and stuff to make? Like, if you could just make one kind, what would you do? Hmm. See, that's difficult because like I'm. Eliana joke, jokes around me a lot because I always get my own way um, on TikTok, especially like when I started to first um, blow up on this app, it was for my vintage acting challenge. And everyone was like, oh, the vintage guy, it's the vintage guy. Do this, do that, do more vintage. I'm like, and in my mind, I'm like, no, like you can't put me in a box. So I just stopped making vintage content for like three months. And like, obviously my engagement plummeted. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to make whatever I want to make. But yeah, it's all about rolling with the punches on TikTok. So like if something is working for you, do it. Um, If you want to grow, that is. But if I could change anything and do one thing, it's going to be difficult to say. I guess it would be more cinematic, more 
fulfilling acting performances um, that you know typically the general public of TikTok is not appreciative of, uh, <laughs> lack of a better term. And the algorithm especially doesn't like you know anything that has dead space in it for the most part. So any acting moments really. But yeah, yeah I would do dark, dark stuff. Yeah, I would do definitely do dark stuff always. Did that? Did I answer you? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to just use the question as like as like a start. Yeah, like, go wherever you want. Like I don't even remember the original questions most of the time. So. <laughs> All right, but remember, if I if I ever go too far, which I, I you know I might end up somewhere completely different, you can really. That's totally fine. I, I won't I won't right. be offended. <laughs> So one of the most popular series you have on your TikTok right now is your mock of 1950s gender norms. And I think it's actually, it's very, I love that series. So what was the inspiration you got for that? Uh, originally people kept on pestering me for more, for more vintage content. Um, I'm constantly inspired in an auditory way, which is weird. I don't know if everyone else is, but I'll hear a song. I'll be like, you know, it would be really cool, you know, for this to be a backdrop of. And then I'll have this idea, a vision in my head that I try to make work. I heard this, this vintage WAP rendition by Stacey Ryan Music. And I was like, this is one, incredible. And two, I need to use it somehow. So I saved it. I think a month went by. And all of a sudden, I remember I saw someone get catcalled on the street, like in like a really gross way, like not even like trying to be polite. It was just like straight out of like 20 years ago like construction worker kind of deal. And I was like, dude, what the hell are you doing? I said it to him and he was like, what? And I'm like, it was just, it, it's one of those people that will never change. And that I got home and then I re-listened to the vintage WAP and I was like, you know, this could be like a learning moment. How could I, I hate being, you know, and everyone hates education to a point, I think. When it's like, this is an educational film that doesn't really get people excited. Uh, but if you can kind of hide the vegetables in the mashed potatoes, so to speak, I think it has a better effect and it will definitely fool the algorithm, hopefully. So when I first started, I was like, you know what? What's a way to kind of minimize controversy? Let's do a period piece because it's um, not about today. It's not about you. Don't even don't get offended because it's not <laughs> about you. So so, you know, the boys side of TikTok. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, but it, it's basically misogyny. And then, then you've got the other extreme, which is not feminism, it's misandry. So they're kill all men and like women suck. And it's like both sides of the spectrum. And I was like, how can I appeal to both sides? Hopefully change one's mind and maybe show that not, you know. We can meet in the middle, it's okay not even try to educate people from both sides because because mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it horseshoe theory is, is the bane of human existence that's you know both extremes are actually closer to each other than they think um they act similarly they don't do research and they yell at people and anyone who has an opposing viewpoint is wrong and the devil um <laughs> yeah that's that's horseshoe theory and that's where we live so i figured why not let's see what happens and hopefully send a positive message or at least shed some light and then I could start sliding in more things that are still prevalent and still happening today like like, like catcalling or um, the wage gap or women in politics or anything really I mean it, it was a it was a tool in which I could talk about and, and kind of bring up these societal issues in a way that hopefully wouldn't piss too many people off um, although, sorry, my air running away from me. People didn't just look at the slapstick humor element of it and actually paid attention to the subject matter because it's one way I thought maybe you could get through to some of these people that people assume are lost causes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I watched the video and it's like, there's just so much you can take away from it because yeah, there's like, as you said, like the slapstick humor on top. And then like, you think about the video, you watch it again and you realize, well, there's like, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to say it cause it sounds like so unprofessional to say it like this. But it's like an onion. Like I think it's like a Shrek quote, but you know, there's like an onion. There's like so many layers to a video. 
like your videos and then and this is, it sounds so mean to say this and I apologize but in the nicest way possible and I truly mean this your videos are onions because they're like thank you no 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 I appreciate that I take that as a compliment because I always try to put layers in all of I love easter eggs I love layers I love subtle performances that are layered that people might not realize the first time but then watch it again it's like when you watch a series that you love in the beginning when you watch it you're you watch, I don't know, this one character and then they turn out to be a bad guy and you're like, wow, I didn't see that coming. And then when you rewatch it years later, you start to notice these little things that the actor did in their performance and you're like, oh, so it was those, there the I whole love, time. I love those so much. Yeah, that's what I try to do. Yeah, and also thanks to the power of editing and duets and all that you can also collab with other actors on TikTok, which is pretty cool so do you have any creators that you've collabed with already that you had a good time with or that you hope to collab with i mean me and eliana collab all the time um and it's great it's it's really interesting in that you know we've never actually met but we're really good friends and we've never shot in the same place we always shoot it remotely and somehow we still managed to get, you know, good chemistry. And um, it's really, it's a pleasure to work with her. She's really a generous actor and generous scene partner. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And I think the first time we did our collab series, one of our collab series, I was like, I don't really want to, it, it made like shooting content by myself boring because it, it almost felt like I was acting on set again or with another actor again. Um, so it's always a blast to work with her. Like, I've collabed with, who else have I collabed with? I've collabed a bit with uh, Emma Norts and, and Jason on comms. We brought them into a series me and Eliana were doing briefly. Um, I'd love to collab with so many people. One is, uh, uh, call me Chris. She's amazing. Um, oh, you know, I love see, her. She's so funny. Yeah, she's the literally the nicest human. I mean, we like we chat all the time. I always DM her and like text her and stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I really want to collab with her. We talked about it briefly before she like absolutely blew up because i remember back back in the day not that long ago she used to do at my acting challenges and i was like this is great and then she's now she's got i don't blame her at all because she's I, I i'm overwhelmed and she's got however many times my audience so she said you know she was busy and i was like i completely understand so one day i hope we could collab together that'd be really cool um, it'd be so fun just, to see a video of like her characters and like your um i guess your nephew character and just yeah kind of work out. yeah I mean that was that's like kind of the goal I would love to do that that'd be very fun if um, she's and, listening if she's listening this oh, is you have to do it now you have to collab. <laughs> so if you're I, listening. I feel so bad for her because I'm like like everyone's constantly on all my platforms whenever I post an Uncle Chris video they're like you gotta collab with Call Me Chris I'm like I know but like I she's want busy. to <laughs> she's like I'm on the same page guys like I'm not gonna keep on asking her she's busy like we, we talk about other things usually when we chat and I don't want to be like, Hey, by the way, have you thought about, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's not something that I want to pressure anybody into. If she yeah, wanted to, I, if, if she wanted to, I feel like she'd reach out and know that I'd be like, yes. Uh, but I'd love to do something, something darker and cooler. Probably wouldn't even live on YouTube or live on TikTok, TikTok. but it, it would probably live in YouTube or, or somewhere else. Maybe just a short film or a film even with, I would love to work with Jason again in, in a, a bigger capacity. And then people wanted me to collab with Jordy. I'd love to collab with Jordy. Um, I love his passion for, for acting. I hope he starts getting into more, you know, acting content as opposed to POV content, but we'll see. And then there's so many people, God. Paige Evans is a really talented actress, I believe. Um, I'd love to collab with her. Dorothy Manon, Manin. Um, there's so many of my mutuals that I, I would love and, and not my mutuals. This list would go on forever, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of them. I mean, it's it's really cool how you're able to do that on TikTok and it's like pretty easy. So it's a great uh, platform for actors, yeah. It is, and it's really underutilized. Any actors who aren't on TikTok yet, um, why? <laughs> it's free scene practice. You don't even have to post anything. I mean, you should post something, but you don't have to. I mean, the biggest thing that actors, they, they, and I was guilty of this too, especially when Vine came out. I was like, 
I wasn't even an actor then, but I, when I saw the Vine actors or the Vine people in movies, I was like, they're not actors. That's not real acting. Oh, like, get over yourself. How often do you act outside of an audition or class? Maybe when you book a role. Right. See, but now I, I get to act every day and I don't have to deal with any of Hollywood's bullshit. Yeah. Um, so it's great right now. Um, while I, you know, while I continue to audition and, and everything. So I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate. I'm eternally grateful for this. So you did mention your YouTube channel. And right now you currently upload all of your TikToks on there. Do you have any plans to make more like maybe a vlog or like just general YouTube videos to post on there? Yes, um, I plan on eventually going more towards YouTube because they treat their creators better. There's um, significantly more transparency. And as far as I know, the algorithm doesn't absolutely uh, abandon you when you post anything creative or put effort into something. Um, that and you can monetize your content. Um, TikTok's got their creator fund, which is lovely. But uh, I don't know. I got, an, I got a response from the first email I ever sent to a YouTube support person and i still i'm verified with four million followers and i have no way of contacting TikTok. really yeah I don't know. yeah uh, that, that's yeah. so frustrating I, I feel that i mean I, I i don't know i don't know what i have to do but yeah i plan on getting into more cinematic content content that i like really want to do and making more original content for youtube that I might cut up and put on TikTok if, if I so desire. But at the moment, I'm, I'm just trying to stay on top of content because it's a lot now. I just have to like make content constantly, come up with new ideas constantly, but it's like, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Except, you know, I would love to be back on set, <clears throat> Netflix or, you know, Google. <laughs> and and um, do you have any actors or actresses that you look up to as a kid or now or? Just anyone you look up to? I've got a lot of actors that I respect. I mean, growing, I used to watch a lot of, people ask me where the vintage stuff came from. Like, why vintage? Why, why do you even like it? Old Hollywood is a, is a very enchanting place. I grew up watching classic films with my grandmother back in the day. And uh, some of the actors that I admired in terms of performance, you know, James Dean, Marlon Brando, um, Humphrey Bogart, Cary Grant, Orson Welles. There's so many. Um, but moving into you know modern era, I've got immense respect for Tom Hardy. I mean, a lot of the Method guys are impressive, like like Joaquin Phoenix, um, Daniel Day Lewis, Christian Bale. There's like so many talented. I mean, Meryl Streep. I don't even need to talk about. Yeah, of her. course. She's so good. <laughs> Like, I feel like whenever people ask about, like, who's your favorite actor, it's just assumed that Meryl Streep is yeah, just like- Yeah, it's always somewhere on the list. You don't it's even need to similar. mention her. <laughs> I mean, I think Anne Hathaway's really good. I think there's so many good people. My God. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, I get inspired by a lot of different people, not by their, you know, necessarily who they are or their career, but like by their, their talent by their skill. I don't wanna be the next anybody. Um, and that's something I feel like a lot of people, especially who aren't in the industry are like, oh, you're gonna be the next this or the next that. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm the no, remix, I'm baby. I'm the oh. remix. Like, <laughs> see, everyone always compares me to every single actor under the sun. Excuse me, my AirPod ran away from me again. Just, this whole interview just AirPod. It's, just, it's, a, it's a really bad AirPod ad. <laughs> Am I still here? Yeah. Oh my goodness. What was I saying? Um, actors are really inspirational. I don't know. Mm. You're the remix. Oh, I'm the real. <laughs> God. Everyone always constantly compares me to every single actor with like light hair and blue eyes. Or wow. light light hair. Jesus. Light eyes and dark hair. Um so all of us are essentially the same person in a lot of the viewer's eyes. And I get it. We, yeah, maybe we look similar, but I don't like being called the next anything. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's just me. Well, because everyone's unique and you can look up to people, but you know, you're, you're you. That's it. <laughs> I, can, I can admire them as, a, as an actor, but I, I don't want to be them. 
Mm -hmm. So I know on your Instagram the other day, you mentioned that you were possibly setting up a Twitch account and oh. I myself am a big fan of Twitch. So I just have to ask, do you know when that will be set up? Soon, it's coming. So I've got I've gotten to that point on my to-do list, my very various to-do lists. I've gotten <laughs> to the Twitch setup portion of that list three times now. So I cannot put it off anymore and I don't know why I am. I think it's a perfectionist, uh, perfection, perfectionist and a procrastination loop that I'm stuck in because I can't start until I get my second monitor and I'm procrastinating on my second monitor. So it's an endless loop of that. So I'm just gonna order one. Maybe I'll do it right after this. And then, <laughs> I'll, then I, I, I got my handle thankfully and I finally made one of their intensely complex passwords. I had no idea. It's, it's, it's I, I sat there for 20 minutes trying to get a password that I wasn't, I didn't even care what it said anymore. I was just trying to make it complicated and it wasn't good enough for 20 minutes. I was like, okay, took a break, came back to it, finally got one that they gave me the okay with. So now I have my handle. I also uh, talked to a few other people who stream a few other creators and it should be coming in the next, the next month, I think before September. Okay, you know what kind different. of games you're gonna play? Oh man, I, I'm really competitive, like really competitive. I used to, I, I'm a, now a washed up Apex Legends console oh, I player. Love that game. Yeah, I was, I was pretty good. I mean, I got masters once. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but I, I'm not a predator, but I'm, I'm pretty good or used to be. I am awful. <laughs> that, that being said, now it's like, I, I've never played the PC version. And now I've got this like big PC that I bought for streaming and editing. And uh, I downloaded Steam and it's, it's like overload almost. There's too many games and I'm like, what do I do? There's so many different so, games to pick from. It's like- I don't know where I'm gonna start but right. we'll see i'm definitely going to take you know audience input for that i think and then also the other people who asked me to be on their team and i was like what is what, what do you mean team i guess there are stream teams or twitch teams i'm like is it exclusive like can i just do it sometimes like what, <laughs> is there gonna is there gonna be like a practice schedule like what am i getting myself into okay. don't even get me started on stream labs like i oh i looked God. at it and i'm like commands like what do you mean command what do you find about hotkeys it's like the most complicated thing you can ever imagine see this is part of why i still don't have a twitch <laughs> so, i don't know i just want to play video games and like hang out with my people that's like all i want i'll never understand twitch i that's it i i, I don't understand it i'm just listening to this i'm, I'm really confused but you yeah. and me both <laughs> so since i don't know anything about twitch kind of Another note, do you have any um, future goals or plans that you can share with us? Goals or plans? World domination, obviously. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I've got so many plans and so many goals. I think my first uh, big goal is to get back on set and in a project that I signed an NDA, so I can't really, I'm trying to figure out how to not break it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't there's, want to some, <laughs> there's something in the works between myself and another creator that potentially could bring us both to far bigger screens in the near future. So that is a goal, um, a big goal. But before that, I mean, I'll just, I'll, I just want to get back on set. I'm like itching for it. That, and I want to make cooler stuff. I always want to make cooler stuff. I'm like, this that's a good cool, goal, but like, I want I to make... get better. Yeah, I, I guess that's like the problem. Though. I'm always, I'm never satisfied. I'm like, I, I could do better. I could do better. Well, that's good though, because you're always pushing yourself to improve. It is. Constantly it's, not the, it's not the most healthy mindset to have. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I've been there. <laughs> she knows very well. <laughs> if you weren't acting, what do, what do you think you would be doing? nothing um <laughs> probably i mean I, I couldn't tell you i couldn't imagine like working a nine to five i couldn't imagine being in an office i couldn't imagine doing paperwork i was almost a lawyer 
like I, I, I had a pre-law minor and I took my LSATs and I had um, an epiphany at my kitchen table when I was about to apply to law school. So I was like, I don't want to do this at all. Like I just woke up one day and I was like, what am I doing? I don't want to do this at all. So I decided, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be an actor. And I moved to New York. I like how everything you said you didn't want to do applies to being a lawyer. Like, I don't want to work a nine to five. Don't want to sit at a desk. Don't want to do paperwork. I'm like, then why did you do free I was good. I was good at the schoolwork at all of it. I was good at it. And the, it just was easy for me. And then, yeah, moral of the story, don't take the easy way out. Yeah. Follow your dreams. Something like that. Don't be, don't be a lawyer. Follow. Don't be a lawyer. <laughs> the world has enough lawyers. <laughs> we're, we're fine. Be an actor instead. I'm just kidding. Oh God. <laughs> so many actors. Well, anyway, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. We had a great time talking with you. Thank you so much. That's it. Uh, well, right. if anyone listening wants to follow you on social media, where can they do that? Oh, sure. Let me shamelessly plug myself. You can follow me at the Chris Barnett, T H E C H R I S B A R N E T T, on all platforms except Snapchat, which I barely use, which is T C B actual. Thank you, guys. Of course. And if anybody listening at home and you like this episode and you want to follow us on our social medias, on Instagram and TikTok, we are at ACOAM.podcast. And on Twitter, we are at ACOAM underscore podcast. And thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next week on a coming-of-age movie.